Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace, my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear? The hour. I first believed the Lord, he has promised, he's promised good to me, his word, my hope. Secures, he will my shield and my portion, my portion be as long as life endures. It was amazing, amazing grace. Oh, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was blind, but now I see. Take my hand, lead me on, and let me stand. I am tired. I am weak. I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the my hand, precious Lord, and lead me on home. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is all almost gone, hear my cry, hear my call, hold my hand. Let
must I fall? Take my hand, precious Lord, and lead me on home, precious Lord. Take my hand, lead me on, and let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn through the storm. Precious Lord, and lead me on home. Welcome, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Sharon Mazik, for welcoming, up, welcoming us with your beautiful voice. Let's give Sharon another round of applause. Good morning and welcome to the 18th annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Community Breakfast. The MLK Community Breakfast is an opportunity to celebrate the life and contributions of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The event is also a time to remember Dr. King's dreams and goals of social justice and equality in order to always continue moving towards them as a community. Bristol Community College is dedicated to collaborating with our community to foster an inclusive environment with a rich diversity of beliefs, cultures, languages, abilities, and lifestyles. When I reflect on the teachings of Dr. King, the changing times in our country, and the challenges that he strived to overcome, I find that 50 years later, yes, 50 years, we are faced with many of the same struggles. We must be dedicated to coming together to repel bigotry, bias, hatred, and discrimination. And we cannot let hate speech hide behind the guise of free speech. It is in BCC's core mission and values that no matter the location, BCC amounts to one great, unified, diverse, and innovative community. Moving forward, we are dedicated to making Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day one of service and outreach. We will continue to find ways today and throughout the year to make a difference in our community by lending a hand to our neighbors and following Dr. King's legacy of equality, peace, and respect. I hope all of you will do the same and join us in this movement. Now, allow me to take a moment to recognize some of our attendees this morning. From the Bristol Community College Board of Trustees, our new chair of the board, Joan Medeiros. Our newest trustee, Frank Baptista. Diane Silvia. And Tony Sapienza. I'd also like to welcome President Emeritus Jack Spraga and his wife Joanne. I'd like to recognize our elected officials. Soon to arrive will be Mayor Jaisal Correa. He will be a part of our program today, but I believe he's not here yet. I'd also like to recognize Senator Michael Rodericks. 
Representative Paul Schmidt. Representative Carol Fiola. Representative Alan Sylvia. Glenda Izagara from Congressman Keating's office. Mayor Ed Lambert. President of the New Bedford NAACP, Dr. Bruce Rose. And Steve Camara, Fall River City Councilor. I'd also like, like to take a moment to introduce our keynote speaker today, Dr. Robert E. Johnson, Chancellor of University of Massachusetts, Dartmouth. our ceremony today, please welcome the Reverend Daryl Malden, pastor of the Bethel AME Church of Fall River. He will be providing our invocation. Uh, thank you, Dr. Douglas. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning everyone. It's good to be alive, isn't it? Yes. It is good to be alive and it's good to be back in this place one more time. It's good to see all of your faces. Why don't we take a moment to pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for what this day means. Martin Luther King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in this in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. In other words, God, we are in this whole together. God, with you there is no male or female, nor Greek or Jew, nor no slave or free, but we are all one under you. So God, keep our hearts together as we travel on this earth. Keep our goals focused on truth, justice, equality, and peace. And so we just thank you for this event. We thank you for this day. And I would be remiss if I did not lift up Dr. Douglas as she pursues her vision for this institution. And God, have her vision fulfilled <laughs> through you. And God, also, I would like to lift up Dr. Johnson as he uh, leads UMass Dartmouth as chancellor, that his vision for his institution as well be fulfilled through you. And so God, we are looking out after our young people today, after all people who are seeking education in a better life. But more than that, God, we are seeking peace on earth. Bless this day and we shall be blessed. Bless your people, and they will be blessed. In your name we pray, and we ask you to bless the food as well. Amen, somebody? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Malden. As the tables begin being called up for the buffet, we would like to share with you a few video messages, followed by a performance by Lewis Lehman and Michael Crowley. Good morning, Bristol Community College. Uh, this is Senator Ed Markey, and I am so sorry that I am unable to be with you all today, but I am grateful for the opportunity to celebrate the life, the spirit, the legacy of one of my heroes, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Thank you, President Laura Douglas, for hosting today's event. We were all delighted to welcome you to the BCC community. You are going to do such a fantastic job. And congratulations to Clayton Timos of New Bedford, this year's distinguished African American alumnus. Our state is better for the work that you do and the skills you have developed at uh, BCC. And I also want to congratulate all the winners of the poster and essay contest. You and your classmates make 
all of us so proud every single day. And I believe that Dr. King would be proud of you too for all the work that Bristol Community College does is truly the work that he championed himself. The democratization of access to quality, affordable education, a path to good paying jobs and careers and investing in our communities. These are the principles that Dr. King espoused and they live on every day here at Bristol Community College. When Martin Luther King Jr. attended school in Massachusetts, he joined a tradition here of fostering every student to think creatively about how to meet the moral, technological, and economic challenges of our times so that we might leave the world a better place than we found it. As his life was forever changed here in Massachusetts through the gift of education, so it is for every student here at Bristol Community College. And so to the students of Bristol Community College today, that is your charge, to carry on the spirit of Dr. King by lifting up others towards a more just and equitable future for everyone. We need your minds, we need your passion, we need your heart to meet the great challenges of our communities today and also the challenges which the world faces today. We must ensure that every immigrant who wants to become a citizen of this great country has a path to do so. Martin Luther King Jr. would see the fight for dreamers and know that there is more work to be done. Women must be able to live and work free from the fear of harassment and earn a wage equal to that of their male co-workers. There is more work to be done. Over 2,000 people in Massachusetts died of opioid-related deaths in 2016. We must work every day to find new ways to combat this growing epidemic. There is more work to be done. So I ask that you, the students, the alumni of Bristol Community College, to join me in this important work. As your senator, I will continue to support BCC so that you all have the resources that you need to help every student fulfill their God-given potential. Thank you, and enjoy celebrating the life and memory of one of the greatest people who have ever lived in the history of this planet, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Congratulations, thank you for all that you are doing. Good morning. While I'm unable to join you this morning, I wanna thank Bristol Community College and President Dr. Laura Douglas for allowing me to participate in your annual breakfast in honor of the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I also wanna congratulate Clayton Timas, the 2018 Distinguished African American Alumnus of the Year for the great honor of being recognized in memory of Dr. King's legacy, as well as recognize your wonderful keynote speaker, Dr. Robert Johnson, who's doing just great things at the University of Massachusetts. I also want to acknowledge the hard work of former president, Dr. Jack Spraga, and the continued hard work of the staff in making this event an annual success. I feel like each speech I have given in the past celebrating Martin Luther King Jr. Day, I always note that we're facing challenging times in our country presently. And sadly, this past year, I believe has proven to be one of the most challenging and sobering and disheartening years we've had. In many ways, this year has been a struggle between the haves and the have-nots. But this tension has always existed in America. In fact, in one of his last speeches, Dr. King talked about the importance of addressing income inequality, saying, we know that it isn't enough to integrate lunch counters. What does it profit a man to be able to eat in an integrated lunch counter if he doesn't earn enough money to buy a hamburger and a cup of coffee. This is a struggle that we still fight today, as witnessed by the recent tax plan where 83% of the money goes to the wealthiest 1%. But if we've carried one value from Dr. King, it's perseverance. Simply hoping for a better country and wishing for better lives for all people is a noble goal. 
But when we confront deeply entrenched forces, as we do in this case, wishing cannot make it so. Make no mistake, we are staring down interests that currently hold the levers of power. So our fight for those with the least among us will not be an easy one. But Dr. King organized in ways we'd never seen. And he pulled people together in ways that have echoed through the generations. We can both overcome our current challenges and turn the tide of history if we remain hopeful and engaged. Americans can do remarkable things when we all pull in the same direction towards a common goal. We can send a message this, this coming year about what's acceptable in public life, about what we stand for, what we stand for as a community, and what we stand for as a country. Good morning, everyone. I'm Congressman Joe Kennedy. I'm so sorry that I couldn't join you today, but I'm honored to have a few moments to discuss a man whose mission of faith and justice has reverberated through generations. For Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., our nation's pursuit of lived and legal equality began in our classrooms. Over 70 years ago, as an 18-year-old college junior, he wrote, quote, intelligence plus character. That is the goal of true education. Bristol Community College, guided by its diverse faculty and student body, has relentlessly pursued that goal for decades. Students and alumni like Clayton Timas have always brought the lessons learned in these halls into their communities to build a stronger, kinder society. In the challenging times we face today, education, intelligence, and character is the most powerful unifying tool we possess. That's why it's so fitting that BCC holds this annual breakfast and why I will always be humbled to play a small part in it. Thank you so much, and enjoy the day. Our annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Breakfast is a collaboration of the college and members of the community who join together to recognize the groundbreaking life and work of Dr. King on the holiday held in his honor. This is not a day off, but a day on to remember Dr. King's dreams and goals and to continue moving toward them. In addition to this breakfast, the celebration of Dr. King at BCC is marked by a poster contest at our local middle schools, an essay contest for BCC students, and the naming of our 2018 Distinguished African American alumnus, all to come. I'd like to take a moment to thank the committee that work behind the scenes to bring this all together today. Co-chairs Robert A. DeLaLue and Carolyn D. Ross, if you'd raise your hands. Thank you, Rob and Carolyn. <laughs> Joyce Brennan, Liz McCarthy, Philomena Ponte, Bob Resendez, Kevin Spirlett, Elizabeth Tidwell, and Dr. Ron Weisenberger. One of our committee members, Liz Tidwell, met Dr. King in the 60s. Her parents were congregational ministers who started their ministry during the beginning of the Civil Rights Movement. Prior to leading a march in Boston, Dr. King visited her home. She shared with us a memory of meeting him and how inspiring a time it was for her and her family. We are grateful that she has joined our committee and will be instilling the same passion right here at Bristol Community College. Now it is my privilege to introduce you to Dr. Robert E. Johnson, Chancellor of the University of Massachusetts, Dartmouth. Dr. Johnson began his leadership at UMass on July 1, 2017, the same day that I joined BCC, and for that we will always have a very special bond. With an un unyielding belief that higher education is a public good, Dr. Johnson has dedicated his career to building higher education opportunities for people. He consistently stresses in words and deeds that the three pillars of global citizenship, academic excellence, social responsibility, and creative expression are prerequisites for success in a complex and hyper-connected world. 
He previously served as president of Becker College in Worcester, Massachusetts. He's a native of Detroit, Michigan, and Dr. Johnson holds a PhD in higher education administration from Toro University International, a master's degree in education administration from the University of Cincinnati, and a bachelor's degree in economics from Morehouse College. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Robert E. Johnson. Good morning, everyone. Let me try that again. Good morning, everyone. It's so exciting to be here uh, to celebrate the life and legacy of the late, great Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Um, first, I want to thank uh, Dr. Laura Douglas and the Bristol Community College family for hosting this event. Give them a big round of applause. Ultimately, we're here because of young people to make sure that they not only understand the history, but also to make sure that we serve as role models uh, for them to understand what they should do, how they should do it, and a way forward. Uh, we have a group of young people here from the Youth Civic Leadership Institute. Uh, to my left, they have on the, uh, the, the uh, bright t-shirts back there. 15 UMass Dartmouth students, 20 area high school students. Give them a big round of applause, service, leadership. I also uh, want to recognize um, our uh, delegation, Senator Mike Rodericks, uh, Representative uh, Sylvia uh, Fiola, and Schmid. Please give them a big hand. Now, now, this is the delegation that works with both UMass Dartmouth and Bristol Community College to make sure that we have the resources that are necessary to wor run world-class institutions. Let's give them a big hand. <laughs> And um, I also want to um, recognize the chair of the board, Joan Medeiros. Um, I, I really uh, met her uh, several months ago, uh, but she is also a UMass Dartmouth alum. Please give Joan a big hand. And of course, the illustrious mayor from Fall River, Mayor Career. Good, good, good to see you. It is a joy and a pleasure to be here today uh, for this great celebration. Uh, I want to thank all of you for coming out on such a cold and brisk day, uh, our community and civic leaders for their continued quest to promote social justice. Uh, I would also like to thank my UMass Dartmouth family for its support during my transition to my new position. All employees or alums of UMass Dartmouth, please Stand. Please stand. There. Give them a hand. We are proud of the fact that at UMass Dartmouth, we provide a private college educational experience and a public university value. You know, I would be remiss if I did not recognize the reason I have any, I've had any element of success in my career and in my life. Uh, she is my rock, she is my bridge over troubled waters. My wife, Michelle Jones Johnson, who serves as the Vice President of Talent and Inclusion at Worcester Polytech and is a bona fide thought leader in the future of work and organizational development, Michelle Jones Johnson. So Mike Rogers just looked at me and said, you better get that right. <laughs> I would also like to congratulate 
uh, our honoree today, Clayton Timas, as the Distinguished African American Alumnus of the Year. To, Laura Doug to Dr. Laura Douglas, friends, and to all of the foot soldiers of the Civil Rights Movement, past, present, and future, thank you for allowing me to spend just a few moments on this great day to talk about the life and legacy of the great, late Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Uh, Massachusetts has always been and continues to be a beacon of hope and justice. Uh, Massachusetts is the birthplace of Crispus Attucks and W.E.B. Du Bois. So it, it is fitting that we celebrate this day standing on the shoulders of those who have come before us, those African Americans who built a rich legacy, made history, and made a difference in the community and in the world. The 54th Massachusetts Infantry, which was one of the first African American regiments in the Civil War. Phyllis Wheatley, who was America's first African American poet. Uh, we are here today. Why are we here today? We all have come here today to celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. I did not know Dr. King, but my Uncle Bob did. Uncle Bob was the associate publisher and executive editor of Jet Magazine for more than 45 years. He graduated from my alma mater, Morehouse College, with Dr. King in the class of 1948. Uh, Uncle Bob was my mentor, and I am his namesake. Uh, my thoughts today are informed in part by Uncle Bob's relationship with Dr. King and the stories that he used to tell me, and also my own relationship with Martin Luther King III, because he and I were classmates at Morehouse together as well, who I've come to know, and he is a dear friend. Uh, today, throughout the King Holiday celebration, across this nation and around the world, people, regardless of color or class, will gather in schools and churches, in synagogues and sanctuaries, in auditoriums and gymnasiums, on their jobs and in jails, in halls and in homes, to honor the life and work of the late, great Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Uh, there will be sermons and speeches. Uh, there will be marches and monuments and programs and proclamations. There will be testimonials and, and teach-ins. There will be praying and singing. And every event will be designed to rededicate Dr. King's dream. It is fitting that we gather today at an educational institution. One of the things that Dr. King believed was education as an empowerment tool. In 1947, at Morehouse College, Dr. King wrote in the Maroon Tiger, the student newspaper, that education has both a utilitarian and moral function. Think about that idea. Your education is wasted if it is only used to earn and not to serve. King argued and insisted that intelligence plus character, that is the global goal, that is the true goal of education. Now think about that idea. You cannot truly be educated without the development of both your intellect and your character, your brain and your soul. Uh, Dr. King knew the importance of studying. He knew that knowledge was power. He knew that a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Uh, therefore, early, therefore, early in Dr. King's uh, life, he decided to develop himself to the fullest through education. Young people, at the age of 15, he finished high school and went to Morehouse College. At 19, he finished college and started working on his master's degree. At 22, he finished his master's and started working on his PhD. And at 25, he finished his PhD and started pastoring at Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. At the age of 26, he started the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. And from that point, he built a better world 
one individual empowered by education that developed both his intellect and character made a difference on this entire planet. Let me ask you today then, do we have the will as a community and then as a nation to achieve the true goal of education? Intelligence plus character. Uh, is it possible to ensure a vibrant and competitive education system in the age of Google, Twitter, and Facebook when, when, when massive amounts of information, some true, some false, uh, some false, some false, <laughs> I'm not going to get political, but I'm just saying. <laughs> As this information constantly echoes across the globe and too often entices us to consider only that which we are preconditioned to believe. More than 50 years after the March on Washington, what would Dr. King say about the state of education in our digital hyper-connected, yet divided society. I know what my Uncle Bob used to tell me. He used to say, Dr. King is brilliant, Dr. King is determined, Dr. King has drive. He has this desire to make a difference in the world. I sum it up simply by putting it this way. Dr. King had the powerful combination of intellect and character, and most importantly, he had the will to win. Regardless of the fire hoses or the threats on his life, he had the will to win. No matter how many times he was put in jail, uh, he had the will to win. We talk about Dr. King's dream, but do we have a dream? Do we have the will to win in these uncertain times with false truths and false lies? What are we going to do in the present age? Do we have the will to win at education because we know providing quality education is a social and economic moral imperative? As our schools and colleges and universities go, so go our communities, our economy, our nation, and our democracy. We live in a world where our education system is struggling. Too many kids, 13 million are going hungry. A one in five in food insecure homes. A too many kids are dropping out. One in four students do not complete high school on time in this country. One in six 16 to 24 year olds have not completed high school. A too many states are investing too little in education from uh, K to gray and the federal government that has done little to keep a college financially affordable and accessible. Uh, this has placed a burden on students and their families, increasing the average amount of student debt to over $37,000. Denying educational opportunity to young people has profound economic impact on individuals, on families, and communities. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reports that a high school dropout will earn about $26,000 a year. A high school graduate, $35,000. Bachelor's degree, I mean community college, $42,000. Bachelor's degree, $59,000. And if you have a master's degree, $70,000. You get the point. Education equals economic opportunity. Don't listen to what some are saying out in the news. Education is the great thing that provides social mobility in our lives. Meanwhile, the perspective developed through years of education is priceless. We cannot raise a generation of young people capable of keeping the dream alive unless we change the course of education in this country. Do we have the will to win? Do we have the character to stand up and do what is right? The truth is that somewhere, at some time, our nation stopped thinking about, stopped thinking of education as a public good. We have stopped thinking of education as an investment in our collective well-being. And sometimes when that happens, we end up with a nation that is in disarray. Uh, the data is, cl is clear. 
The more education you have, the higher your income. The more education you have, the healthier you are. The more education you have, the less likely you are to commit a crime or be a victim of crime. The higher a community's uh, dropout rate is, the weaker its economy. The lower a community's education attainment, the lower its family income. Here in Fall River, civic leaders understanding the, that connection is important. Uh, your Chamber of Commerce and corporate citizens such as Nick Chris at Bay Coast Bank who has been an advocate and who has invested in education because he recognizes the economic benefit to the community. Give them all a big round of applause. And as we know from Dr. King's example that the education of one child has the potential to change our entire society. You see, education equals self-development. We need only look around this room to see how self-development has changed the lives of people. We need only survey the landscape of America to see how self-development has brought us a long way from 50 years to go. Uh, may it be the acute analytical ability of Alex Haley or the bad, bodacious brilliance of Benjamin Elijah Mays or the optimistic open-mindedness of Oprah Winfrey or the calm, courageous character of Coretta Scott King, we see that each and every one of them in their own way kept that dream alive. In the face of adversity, there are African Americans who stood up and moved forward in every walk of life. The road has been long, the struggle has been great, but we are living the dream because of the shoulders of those individuals who have come before us who decided not to give up and they confronted the times that they were in and they conquered injustice. Nothing will deter us from advancing, even though some might say we live in treacherous time. The disappearing civil discourse in our country the alt-right movement, Charlottesville, the embracing and applauding of venomous tweets. Uh, it was the parliamentarian Edmund Burke who said the only thing necessary for triumph of evil is for good men and women to do nothing. Do we have the will to win, to stand up to the hypocrisy of some who are now leading this nation? Do we have the will to win to say when we see injustice, we won't look the other way. We will run towards it and make sure that justice evolves in this society, in every walk of life, for every citizen, no matter what. A society that is still grappling with the very basic principle of treating women with dignity and respect. We live in a society that will not pay a woman the same wage as a man who is doing the same job. You know, we should be excited that two women host the Today Show, but that excitement is tempered by the fact that neither of them earns 50% of the wage of the abusive man that Hoda replaced. There's something wrong with that. Do we have the will to win? Who will carry that torch? Every year around this time, there's a renewed dialogue about who are today's torch bearers. Who is the 21st century Martin Luther King Jr.? During the Civil Rights Movement, my Uncle Bob would sometimes travel with Dr. King to cover a story. The publisher, John H. Johnson, would always tell Uncle Bob that it was dangerous and he did not uh, have to go uh, to cover the story in Mississippi, Montgomery, uh, Birmingham, or, or Selma. Uncle Bob, as a dedicated journalist, would take that risk so that black America would be told the story of the struggle and of the movement. Uncle Bob went with Dr. King during the height of the Montgomery bus boycott. In August 1955, he went to Mississippi to cover the brutal murder of Emmett Till. Uh, the story with the picture of Emmett Till appeared on the cover of Jet Magazine. 
It lit a fire in the soul and conscience of a country and energized the civil rights movement. As a country, we are not where we need to be, but thank God we are not where we used to be. Uh, we have come a mighty long way in the struggle. We are living and realizing the dream each and every day. We have realized that dream through self-development and ed in education, business, industry, government, and law. I contend that if everyone here today commits themselves to self-development, de then there will be plenty of people to pick up the torch to meet the needs of the present age. We cannot and should not uh, recreate the past. We can't boycott in Birmingham or sit in in Selma or march in Montgomery. We have to stand up with a moral conscience uh, underpinned by intellect and character to meet the needs of the present age. So uh, when there is a false tweet that goes out into cyberspace, don't be anti that tweet. Be pro something that is counter to that tweet. Mother Teresa said, I will never go to an anti-war movement, but I will go to a pro-peace movement. Uh, we witnessed uh, uh, this recently in the Alabama Senate race a few weeks ago. It, it should not go unnoticed that the alt-right preferred candidate and the candidate that was preferred by the President of the United States was winning all night. And then the last precincts in Alabama started to be counted in the county where Selma, Alabama is located. When Selma, Alabama's votes were counted, it was clear that the alt-right would lose and the man who prosecuted two Klan members responsible for the 1963 Birmingham church bombings that murdered four African-American girls would win. The arc of the universe bent a little more towards justice on that night. We cannot discuss the power and influence of Dr. King without noting his spirituality. As a Baptist minister, Dr. King always knew that God was on his side. And because of that, he knew the power of truth and love. He fought a good fight knowing that if he fought for the universal laws of justice, peace and love, he would win the battle to perform, to reform earthly laws around civil rights and voting. So he fought the system, always knowing that uh, no jail cell could contain him, no biting dogs could int intimidate him, no fire hoses would turn him, no explicit racism could discourage him, no hooded Klansmen could frighten him, no bomb could distract him. No bullet could stop the arc of the universe from bending towards justice even once he was gone. Is there a place for a powerful spiritual awareness today or are we continue or com uh, condemned to worship our devices? The present internet age talks about BG which means before Google. If Dr. King were here today I think he may have his own version of BG. He would probably say before God. He would be asking us when we stand before God, will we dedicate ourselves to keeping the dream alive? Will we teach black boys how to become strong black men? Will we help the homeless? Will we feed the hungry? Will we be a mother to the motherless and a father to the fatherless? And will we stand strong against the tsunami of injustice? In the current face of adversity, who is willing to take up the torch for a new generation of leadership? The 21st century has emerged and a new generation of leadership is emerging to meet the needs of the present age. All we have to do is look around us and we can see uh, the hope and the humility of Congressman uh, Joe Kennedy, the driven dedication drumbeat of Deval Patrick, the 
calm, courageous character of Charlie Baker, the marching, meaningful mission of Michelle Obama, the daunting, determined dignity of Donna Brazile, the serene, subtle strength of Spike Lee, and even the bright, brave brilliance of Barack Obama. A new generation of leadership has stepped forward, and if they stay focused on their own self-development and spiritual awareness, then the dream will be kept alive. My Uncle Bob used to always say, nephew, fly with the eagles and don't run with the turtles. He used to always say that the eagles are interesting birds. Uh, he said, you see, when a storm is approaching an area, the eagle has the ability with this huge wingspan to allow the updraft of the wind to lift it above the storm. The eagle does not fly through the storm, but above the storm. In our current state, it is only through such enlightenment that we can rise above the storms that are hitting our nation today. We must rise above the storm of petty politics. We must rise above the storm of home foreclosures and a do-nothing Congress. We must rise above the storm of gun violence on our streets, in our schools, and in our communities. We must rise above the storms of our soldiers dying in an endless war. Only through education that strengthens both our character and intellect and self-development that includes spiritual awareness can we hope to bring about social change. Our legacy, social change, or festering injustice. Our legacy 50 years from now will be either the social change we bring or the injustice we allow to fester. Dr. Kim King committed his life to social justice, literally. He used his talents to make the world a better place. He used his knowledge to challenge an unjust system. He used his charisma to motivate a people. He used his voice to spread hope throughout the world. He used his vision to see a world that ought to be. He used his power to seek justice at home and peace abroad. He used his gift that God had given him to build a better world. Dr. King could have chosen to live a comfortable life. He was pastoring a large church in Alabama. He could have taught a college, at a college or university or sought political office. But he did not choose a life of comfort or convenience. He chose a life of challenge and controversy. He chose to challenge the bus system in Montgomery. He chose to fight for voting rights in Selma. He chose to integrate Birmingham. He chose to march on Washington. He chose to speak out against the Vietnam War. He chose to march with the garbage workers in Memphis. What will we choose to fight for? What will we choose to fight for? When we see what's going on in this country, what will we choose to fight for? The opportunity for all Americans to have a decent job and a good education? A stop of the proliferation of guns in our schools? Investment of corporations in our communities? Capital for young entrepreneurs to start a business? An education system that teaches for life and not just for a living? It is on us to enliven, to excite, and engage a great generation of young people, not just willing, but also able to live the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. One of the goals of Jet Magazine and my Uncle Bob was to keep people aware of what was happening in the world to inspire positive change within the community. My Uncle Bob, along with Dr. King and countless others, advanced that mission by helping our nation to see others who were doing great 
and inspirational things in the world. It is on us now. It is our turn. It is our duty. Let us remember after the speeches and the proclamations, the songs and the sermons and the prayers today, that the struggles continue. Our elders did their best. Justice is not present. We must do the rest. Uh, somebody's homeless, there's work to be done. Somebody's hopeless, the victory can be won. Racism is rampant. We must fight while we can. Peace is still possible if we all lend a hand. Apartheid died. Can you hear that African drum? Our parents did their best. Now our time has come. Let us hold on to the same human spirit that enabled us to succeed against the odds so many times. The same human spirit that enabled us to rise from the valley of slavery to corporate CEOs. The same spirit that allowed our nation to rise up against the tyranny of terrorism. Uh, there are all kinds of human spirits. The spirit of the Boston Tea Party, the spirit of the Declaration of Independence, the spirit of Henry Ford who wanted to build a car that his employees could afford to buy, the spirit of Albert Einstein who won a Nobel Peace Prize in physics, the spirit of our soldiers who stormed the, shore, store, shore, stormed the shores against fascism. Uh, uh, yes, there are all kinds of human spirits uh, in the world, but I think we need to capture the human spirit of our ancestor, ancestors, the same human spirits, spirit that allowed a black man by the name of Cheops, he was the builder of the Great Pyramid, which stands 451 feet tall. It covers 13 acres of land, it took over 2.5 million bricks to build it. Even today, with all of today's modern technology, we cannot determine how our ancestor actually built that pyramid. On this King holiday, let us recapture the human spirit that allowed George Washington Carver to, drop, to derive over 285 products uh, uh, from uh, a peanut and 118 products from a potato. Uh, on this King holiday, let us recapture our human spirit, the same spirit that allowed us to endure 450 years of slavery, go on to elect and to go on and elect the first African American president of the United States. The same human spirit that allows us to endure our children uh, being killed in Newtown, Connecticut. The Great Depression and the Great Recession, Vietnam, two world wars and 9-11 and hurricanes in Texas and Puerto Rico. Let us continue to dream with the same human spirit that allowed us to discover the printing press, traffic light, and a baby carriage. The human spirit that allowed us to discover syrup, ironing board, sugar, and even Worcestershire sauce. Let us continue a dream and build on the wondrous works of W.E.B. Du Bois and the positive persuasive prose of Paul Lawrence Dunbar and the talented, tenacious truths of Thurgood Marshall and the strong sophistication of Soldier of Truth. Let us remember to keep the dream alive by remembering Martin Luther King was a great man. We should look to him and say, yes, I can. He had a dream and so should you. Why don't you stand and show the world what we can do? Uh, some people believe the dream is dead. We have to stand. Our young people need to be led. Things are not what they always seem. There's a young person out there who also has a dream. Let us all stand and join as a team to remember this great man who one night had a dream. Uh, some called him doctor. Some live his dream. Remember the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. We all can dream. Oh, yes, we can. Don't, do not forget the full measure of this man. If we have faith and believe in God's will, just like Dr. King, our dreams will be fulfilled. So let us go forward and remember one thing. Never, ever forget the legacy of the late, great Dr. Martin Luther King. Finally, I want to close 
in the spirit of my Uncle Bob, who wrote the cover story in Jet Magazine of Emmett Till's death. And I want to contextualize Emmett Till's death with what I recently heard someone in the public domain say about his accuser. As you know, in 1955, in the state of Mississippi, Carolyn Bryant, a white woman, accused a 14-year-old boy by the name of Emmett Till of whistling at her as she was walking down the street. Last year it was published and she admitted that she lied about Emmett Till and he never whistled at her. More than 60 years ago, she lied about what happened. Uh, she was the Jim Crow version of today's fake news. Emmett Till was dragged from his home and lynched from a tree. His mother insisted they have an open casket so that the world could see how her son was brutalized. Rosa Parks said the day she decided not to sit in the back of the bus, she thought of Emmett Till. You see, Emmett Till's death was the spark that lit a candle that caused the smoldering flame that ultimately ignited the civil rights movement. Carolyn Bryant's single action, her decision to lie, her decision to lie triggered a nation to rise and fight for a common cause that ultimately the arc of the universe bent towards justice. Had it not been for the civil rights movement and the arc towards justice, I would not be chancellor of UMass Dartmouth today. As we go our separate ways, and think about a leader who talks about fake news, women in deeply misogynistic ways, preferring immigrants from, from Norway over those from Haiti or Africa. I know we are all appalled and, and terrified by a leader who promotes hatred, racism, and xenophobia, who uses social media to promote himself at the expense of others. Now, there is no difference in what Carolyn Bryant stood for then and what a certain leader stands for today. Take, take the physical image of Emmett Till's brutalized body laying in that casket and let it inspire us today. Let us, rise up with a na let us rise up as a nation with the will to win and achieve the true goal of education, which is intelligence plus character. Let us rise up as a nation and as a community of learners and not let the modern day Carolyn Bryant triumph. Let us rise up with the will to win so that 50 years from now, history will say on January 15th, 2018, that that was the beginning of a new generation of leaders who bent the arc of the universe towards justice. Thank you. Must have been cold there in my shadow to never have sunlight on your face. You were content to let me shine 
Cause that's your way You always walked a step Behind Well I was the one with all All the glory While you were the one with all The strength A beautiful face Without a name A beautiful face to hide the pain. Did I ever tell you you're my hero? You're everything I wish I could be. And I can fly higher than any For you are the wind beneath my wings It might have appeared to go unnoticed But I've got it all here in my heart I want you to know I know the truth That I would be nothing without, without you Did I ever tell you you're my, my hero You're everything I wish I could be And I can fly For you are the wind beneath my wings Did you ever know that you're my hero? You're everything I wish I could be And I can fly higher than, than an eagle for you are the wind beneath my wings. You're the wind beneath my wings. I thank God for you. You are, you are. You're the wind beneath my wings. And I thank God for you, you are, you are, you are the wind beneath, the wind beneath my wind. Dr. King's historic march on Washington in August 1963, the Board of Trustees at Bristol Community College created an essay competition inviting BCC students to write about the meaning of Dr. King's dreams and ideals. As faculty and staff committee took on, a staff, faculty and staff committee took on the challenging task of choosing the winning entries. I would like to invite the first, second, and third place winners to the stage. In third place, Don Silva, Fall River. Second place, Eric Swiderski of South Easton. Eric. And first place, Leanne Nevis of New Bedford, who will also read us her winning essay.
Leanne will now read us her essay. Good morning. Good morning. It is an honor to stand here before you today as we honor the late, great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. came into my life in a profound way at the age of 12 when I began to deliver his I Have a Dream speech. Over the years, I've had the opportunity to deliver the speech to thousands in audiences large and small from churches to universities and events alike, honoring Dr. King. The famous words have left my lips and left an impact on those who have heard them. However, it was not until now that I realized the true magnitude of his message. Those words have become embedded in me, almost automatic, to the point where they've become a natural way of thinking. As I compare the state of the nation at the time when Dr. King spoke and the times we currently live in, I realize that his words are just as important today as they were in that very moment. Dr. King delivered those words with the intent to remind America of the fierce urgency of the moment. He shook the foundations of our nation to realize that this was no time to relax and just allow things to happen. It was the time then, and it is the time now, to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. He fiercely conveyed that it would be fatal for the nation to overlook the urgency of the moment. We have gotten to a point in our nation where the situation is critical. But these injustices are multi-tiered and can be applied to all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, gay or straight, rich and poor. The fact remains that no, we do not live in a post-racial society, nor do we live in a time when it is simply okay to sit back and allow the injustices and oppression occurring present day to simply be overlooked and undermined. Hate, oppression, violence, injustices seem to be everywhere. You cannot go a day without seeing another instance on the news and wonder, where is the peace? Where's the unity? Where is the love? As we move forth into the next stage of this nation, it is imperative that we take this major lesson away from Dr. King's message. We must not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of hatred and bitterness. Again and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. If America is to stand again as the great nation which it was intended to be, we must stand together. Dr. King's dream that I could live in a nation where I would not be judged by the color of my skin, but by the content of my character, is what motivates me every single day as a woman of color seeking to thrive in America.
Thank you. Thank you, Leanne. Please jo join me now in welcoming the Honorable Jaisal Correa, Mayor of the City of Fall River, who will bring greetings from the city and announce the winners of the MLK Poster Contest. Would the Poster Contest winners please come up to the stage now? Get over here if you would. Each year we invite young people at the local middle schools the opportunity to reflect on Dr. King's ideals and create a poster for the college's annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. poster contest. Please take some time after the breakfast to view the posters that are out in the entrance way. Uh, they're hanging right in the lobby on a display. So, Mayor Correa, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. This has uh, been quite an emotional morning for me as I sat here in the front row and listened to Dr. Johnson's words, uh, just so inspirational. And we are so blessed and so fortunate uh, to live in a part of the Commonwealth that has such great leadership at our educational institutions, both here at Bristol Community College with Dr. Douglas and Dr. Johnson at UMass. Please give them both a rousing round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Truly. Truly inspirational leaders that get to fly above the storm of politics in many cases. And I, I really appreciate the words that have been shared this morning. And then to our, our essay contest winner, uh, again, the emotions just flooding, the chills climbing up my back uh, from both of the speeches this morning were truly outstanding. And the words uh, couldn't be truer. We live in a time that there are so many challenges. And sometimes it feels like we're not moving forward that we're not progressing. But it's the same feeling I get, like I got this morning uh, while I was at the gym on the treadmill. You can't stop while you're on a treadmill. You're gonna fall off. You've gotta keep moving forward. And I think that's the message that the speakers today, far more eloquently than I could do this morning, uh, promoted to all of us here. That we have to keep pushing. That we have to keep moving forward. And that the injustices that we see on a daily basis, if we remain silent, will never be overcome. And that is the message that Dr. King promoted his entire life. He promoted that message that you cannot be silent and that you must stand up to injustices, but through peaceful means, not through violence, but through education, through communication, through understanding. And every year around this time, I think about his most famous speech, the I Have a Dream speech that he gave in Washington, D.C. on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. I've had the opportunity to visit, of course, the Lincoln Memorial, but also the Martin Luther King Jr., uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial as well. And what's so interesting about the I Have a Dream speech is when you read the contents of that speech, or you hear that speech, or you watch it on YouTube, you can count the times that Dr. King said the word I, the title of the speech, I Have a Dream. But I think what's more interesting is the amount of times he says the word, or the pronoun we. He says I 13 times. He says we 33 times. His message then, his message today, and his message every single day to every person, all of God's children, is that we, together, must act, that we together must realize that we are the same. We are all God's children. We are all people, not of color, not of race, not of different religions. When you break all that down that's been built up, we are people. We are people that are struggling at times. We are people that are succeeding at times. We are people that must come together to fulfill his message and his dream. I think it was on purpose that he said that he had a dream, that it was a dream. Because dreams become reality, not through just the actions of one person, 
although the impacts of one person have changed the course of history. But dreams become reality when we share those dreams with others and we work together to achieve those realities. And that's the message of Dr. King. That's the message of Dr. Johnson. That's the message of our essay contest winner. That's the message that everyone in this room should promote and in many cases are already promoting. Uh, the city of Fall River welcomes you this morning to this incredible breakfast. Uh, we are honored to be here as a representative of the city, as a representative of our elected officials. Uh, we are truly blessed, again, to have so many wonderful elected officials in our community uh, and members of our community, both in the business community, the educational community, our youth. How many youth are here today? If you could just raise your hand. Young people, give them a round of applause. Our next generation. There are so many activities taking place at different youth organizations in the city this morning and this afternoon, whether it's the Boys and Girls Club later today or many of the churches in our community. Uh, so many of our youth, our participants, are, are actually making those things possible. Uh, I remember a few years back when I was a little bit younger, not too long ago, uh, but <laughs> when I would read ex excerpts uh, of the I Have a Dream speech, uh, part of uh, you know, recreation at the time, CD Rec and how true those words continue to be t today. Uh, truly uh, an honor to be here uh, and, and promote the message of peace and equality in our community. So thank you on behalf of the City of Fall River. Uh, we uh, welcome all of you to the City of Fall River and to Bristol Community College. We're happy to be here and we will continue to improve uh, our message of peace and prosperity here in the city for all individuals, whether they uh, are here today, whether they're coming here in the future, or whether it's the next generation Thank you and God bless, and it's an honor to be here this morning. Now we have some of our, thank you. Now we have some of our contest winners. This is uh, always a great, great time of the year to see some of these wonderful posters that are created. Uh, so I'm gonna read the winners here. And... All right, forgive me if I mess up some of these names. All right. I always tell people my first name is Jazel like Basil. That's an easy way to remember it, but you know. Anyway, our third place winners are Michael Diagiorno from Whitney Academy. Thank you. Nice. And you can see all these posters, I believe, in the uh, in the lobby here as well. Uh, next third place winner, Ava Moniz, Talbot Middle School. Next is Patience Boudreaux, Cusp Middle School, uh, could not attend. Not, could, not, could not attend today. But we do have the... Really. <laughs> Next we have Soleil Gosp, Cusp Middle School. Next are our second place winners, Lane Boothby, Whitney Academy. Next we have Gabriella DeAndre, Talbot Middle School. Next, we have Mackenzie Reed, Cuss Middle School. Thank you. 
Okay, and now the first place winner, Eden McCausland, Morton Middle School. Congratulations to all the winners. And uh, just, just in closing, I, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, um, you know, we just, we just saw some winners of uh, a poster contest, of course, from our various schools locally and uh, relatively locally. Uh, some of them are Fall River Public Schools, Cuss, Talbot Middle School. And uh, I would be, again, remiss if I didn't mention, we do have some of our uh, school committee members here Today we have Tom Corey and Paul Coogan from the school committee, as well as Steve Kamara from our city council. Please give them a round of applause. And Joe Martin's in the back. I know he's here. Our former school, our current school committee member. <laughs> I don't know if he's born, been sworn in yet. Uh, but it's very important. Education, as Dr. Johnson mentioned, is so, so, so important. It is the, the gateway and the path to so much more opportunity and to character building and knowledge, not just earning. I thought those words were so true. And it is so important that everybody in this room, all of our Fall River rights that are here today, remember that we are working very, very hard to build a world-class institution, a, a building, a school, a new Durfee High School. And that is going to be before our, our people very soon. So please support us in that mission, in that effort. Um, it's, thank you. Uh, the facility is, is, of course, the building. It's a, a state-of-the-art facility, of course. Uh, but it's the people and the teachers that work so hard every day to educate our youth. And it's so, so vitally important because children in Fall River should have the same educational opportunities as any child in the entire Commonwealth, no matter the circumstances. And that is why it's so importantly vital of the work that our teachers do and that our school committee does. And thank you so much. And again, God bless. Enjoy today. Thank you. Thank you so much. I also uh, want to recognize District Attorney Tom Quinn, who's with us today. Tom, if you would raise your hand. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Mayor Correa. The Distinguished African American Alumnus Award is presented annually by the BCC Alumni Association Steering Committee recognizing outstanding achievement. Here to introduce the, war, the award is Bristol Community College alumna, Cynthia G. Flanagan, second vice chair of the BCC Alumni Association Steering Committee. Please come up to the stage, Cynthia. Good morning. It is my honor today to introduce Clayton J. Timas of New Bedford, Bristol Community College's 2018 Distinguished African American Alumnus of the Year. While studying business administration at BCC, Clayton took multiple part-time jobs to support his brother following the tragic loss of his father. Prior to graduating from BCC, Clayton transferred to Worcester State University in 2010. He is only a few courses away from graduation. He is currently serving as assistant manager of a Citizens Bank branch in New Bedford. Clayton has enriched his community for the past five years as a dedicated amateur athletic union basketball coach, assisting players on and off the court and instilling in his team the word student comes before the word athlete. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Clayton J. Timmis. Good morning, everybody. It's a great honor to be here today. Um, 
a little nervous, wrote a speech. <laughs> First and foremost, I would like to thank God for his never ending grace, mercy, and guiding me through what ended up being one of the toughest times in my life, the passing of my father. As a student and athlete during my time here at BCC, I can honestly state that I never thought I would be standing here in front of you guys today, um, receiving this prestigious award for the Distinguished African American Alumnus of the Year. I know my father would be very proud of me. This is such a humbling, great honor. Please allow me a few minutes to thank some of those important and influential people uh, that have impacted my life. First and foremost, I'd like to take this moment to thank my wonderful wife, Stacy, for being by my side through the good and the bad while always believing and supporting me. I would also like to thank my precious and beautiful daughters, Atiana and Lexi Ann, as yet they are another source of my determination, um, and I want to provide them with the very best that life has to offer. Thank you, thank you. To, to my brother Clay D for being not only my brother, but my best friend after the pass of our father, that's all we had, uh, it was each other. I can't put into words how much he means to me and how much I love him. I wish he would be here today, but he couldn't. Um, but I know he's here, he's, he's here in my heart. To the Bristol Community College administration and staff for supporting and challenging me to be the best version of me that I could possibly be. be. I truly appreciate being a part of this great educational institution and will continue to probably call BC my alma mater. I have endured many challenges on my journey that eventually led me to standing here before you today. However, each of these challenges have only strengthened me to make me the man that I have become. It's not just through my efforts that have brought me here to where I have landed, as there has been others that have a significant impact in my life uh, and still do to this day. I would like to make a special mention to Mr. Rob Bellalou. Stand right here, give him a round of applause, guys. He's the head basketball coach and the director of Multicultural Affairs here at BCC, as I'm sure you guys know. I'd also like to mention Mr. Phil Young and, Mr. Pa, uh, and his wife, Mrs. Paula Young. Suffice to say that without them, I wouldn't be standing here today um, talking to all of you and accepting this award. Everyone needs a mentor in their lifetime, and I'm fortunate enough to, to have found these three in a time that was very difficult um, to me after my father's passing, where I had nobody to turn to, and I was able to turn to them. Um, and I greatly appreciate everything they did for me. Um, thank you. I was lost and didn't know what direction to turn as the only relative I had, like I said, was my brother. And I had a part-time job at the local YMCA where I spent most of my time. Throughout my high school years, I would always see Phil and his sons play at the local parks at local YMCA. Um, and they would always play together on the same team. Um, everybody used to hate when they showed up on the court because halfway through the game, they either argued with each other for somebody passing or not shooting too much or not shooting enough. Um, but I envy that the bond that they had um, and I always like to play on the team. And whenever there was missing a player, Phil will always ask me to play on their team, um, and so on and so forth. Um, as a side note, I wasn't the greatest basketball player. Uh, I started playing basketball my freshman year of high school after I came back from Cape Verde when I was 12. Um, but gradually got better year by year by practicing. Just like I said, I spent most of my time at the local YMCA practicing, so that, that was great for me. Um, never played in a high school team until my senior year, and it sat bench for most of the time. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And it was at this time, uh, my senior year after my father's passing, that Mr. Phil introduced me to Coach Rob. Um, and it was the first year that BCC was also having a basketball program. Um, and I also happened to be where my life was a complete mess, and it ended up being a great parent. Um, as Coach Rob just sought the talent in me that I didn't see in myself during the time, but I'm sure glad that they did. I applied for BCC and was able to attend with st uh, state grants. During the two years I attended classes at BCC, I've learned many lessons from the staff, uh, the teachers, and most of all from Coach Rob, the passion that he has for coaching, the, <clears throat> the respect that he demanded from each of his players. He showed all the players and taught us values that we could use in our everyday lives. He helped me bring strong relationship with some of the players so I consider them family now. Coach Rob always made a point to have a relationship with each of his players. He truly as he truly cares about all of us, not only about our education, but our standing in our community and the fact that we can make a change, we can make an impact in our community as well. He truly is selfless and places others before himself, and it's truly admirable quality that I try to emulate in my everyday life. The respect that Coach Rob demanded and the professionalism that he taught me helped me go to Worcester State and continue my education as a business administration 
um, to get my degree in business administration and helped me also showcase my talent and be able to play in the Cape Verde national team. Um, <coughs> excuse me. As he helped me pass the wisdom along, just like um, they mentioned before me, I have been coaching basketball for the past five years and I help players on and off the, uh, off the court. Um, and I worked with a great young man, great young men, and helping that is still the same thing that Coach Robin instilled in me throughout the years. For those of you who have touched my life in a positive manner along the way, I am grateful to have, for all you have done for me and my family. I couldn't mention everyone because I'll be standing here for days reading off names off this paper. Uh, but I'm glad that you touched my life in a positive manner. In closing, I'd like to share one of my favorite quotes from the movie Coach Carter. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightening about shrinking so other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. As we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other, other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our fears, our presence automatically liberates others. Uh, thank you, and it's a great honor to be here today. Um, that's, that's it, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Clayton. We are very proud of the difference that you are making in the community and the difference that you are making in the lives of young athletes. We'd also like to invite Glenda Izagara to present a certificate of special congressional recognition to Clayton. Would you please come forward? This is the surprise element in our program. <laughs> Come on up, Glenda. Hello, I'm Glendy Sagire. I'm a state representative for Congressman William Keating. We serve the Massachusetts 9th District. Part of it is New Bedford and the South End of Fall River. On behalf of Congressman Keating, um, we would like to recognize you and send you this citation as a distinguished African-American alumnus for demonstrating achievement in your professional significant contribution to your community and notable services to Bristol Community College. On behalf of the Congressman, here is your citation. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Congratulations, Clayton. I'd like to mention a few items before we close. First, BCC, BCC will be hosting a number of events during Black History Month, so please check our website for all those details, bristolcc.edu slash Black History Month. Also, we're offering a free one-credit course based on the readings of Dr. King. The course will be held on Monday evenings beginning March 26 for five weeks. This is a great opportunity to read Dr. King's work. You can sign up today in the back of the cafeteria or just visit bristolcc.edu slash MLK. I'm also so proud to announce that BCC will be holding its first Black and African American Family Night on Tuesday, February 27th at 6.30 p.m. in honor of Black History Month at Bristol Community College. Bring your family to this special information session to learn more about what BCC has to offer. We'll also be giving away a $500 scholarship. 
I'd like to mention as well a call from the Association of American Colleges and Universities for all of us to mark the second nas annual National Day of Racial Healing, which is tomorrow, January 16th. AACNU calls on colleges and universities across the country to engage in activities, events, or strategies that promote healing and foster engagement around the issues of racism, bias, inequity, and injustice in our society. This National Day is an opportunity for people and organizations to come together in their common humanity and take collective action to create a more just and equitable world. This morning's event is a perfect kickoff to this day of racial healing. Now, as it is our tradition before we close, let us join together in the great anthem of, an of the civil rights movement, We Shall Overcome, found in your program, led by Rabbi, Rabbi Mark Elber and Cantor Shoshana Brown of Temple Beth El. Also, before we close, please remember that the interfaith service at the Bethel AME Church at 146 Hanover Street begins at 11 a.m. That was two minutes ago. If you're like me, you'll be rushing over. Reverend Malden invites all of you to attend. Thank you all for coming. Let us now join together in our anthem of the civil rights movement. I'm um, just going to start with a benediction before the singing. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. In these days of increasing expressions of prejudice and racism, silence is not an option. Almost 53 years after the historic march from Selma to Montgomery, we still see how much remains to be done to repair our broken world. As it says in the Talmud, the day is short and the task is great. Hayom katsar v'hamelacha merubar. You are not obliged to finish the task, neither are you free to neglect it. The task of repairing our world is too great for any one person to achieve, but together, we can make a difference. Hashomer achianochi, we are our brothers and our sisters keeper. Let us always be motivated by love and compassion, a love of justice and a love for our fellow humans, a love for our planet and for all who inhabit it with us, for truly we share a common destiny. May the prophetic vision of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. always remind us of our sacred duty to love our neighbors as ourselves and to strive to create a world in which all can live as free and equal citizens in peace and harmony. Amen. Uh, before we sing, uh, I wanted to uh, introduce the name, which was not on the program, of my sister Sharon Mazik of Allen AME Church in Providence. Doesn't she sounded great? <laughs> so she, she's gonna help me lead, we shall overcome. Now two little additions, emendations to the song, which is on your program. Um, one is that um, I think we've been waiting long enough, instead of saying we shall overcome someday, let's sing we shall overcome today. And number two, um, the, uh, it, the, where it says that the last, last three verses, it will be, each one will be we shall all be free today. And so. <laughs> We shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome today, oh deep in my heart. I do 
God bless you. God bless you, my God.